Hello everybody, welcome back in to the Let's Look Brad channel. So, this is actually the first time I've ever had a bag of pennies. Uh, what looks to be, as it shows right here, $50 in pennies, basically to fill one of these bang bags up. So that's pretty awesome. I had the uh, roommate here where I'm at here in Gillette pick me up a $50 bag. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, there looks to be a mix of everything in there from copper to the newer pennies, but we're definitely going to be looking for a lot of varieties in here. A lot, a lot of varieties in here. So I'm actually pretty excited. Cross the fingers, we get a bunch of wheat scents. Got uh, wheat scent albums still to fill up. I'm not seeing anything off the top here just yet, but crossing fingers, we get that 1943 in here. <laughs> Anyhow, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, let's jump, go ahead and jump on in and see what we get. This is awesome. Well, I was hoping I'd have more finds. I've actually been, I've got probably a quarter of the bag left, maybe a little bit more than a quarter of the bag. And there's not very many finds in there, honestly, which is quite surprising because someone must have ran through it previously or this, these coins have just been in town for a long time, just sitting here rotating because Gillette is kind of isolated off from a lot of the, uh, other towns some here, heck, you gotta drive, you know, an hour, an hour and a half, you even get to another town around here. So anyhow, we do got a couple of foreign coins there. It's been a little while since I've actually ever, actually found a Balboa 2019 there. Is the Republican de Panama Balboa. Then got a uh, Canadian Santhera, it's a 2000 there. Now, We've got the 2009s. This is the only Philadelphia so far, but we got uh, the presidential life, the early childhood, so forth, so on. And then I pulled off a pretty cool looking toner. It might just be some gunk or something on there possibly, but pretty cool looking, nice little black toning that's on there. So I pulled it off to the side as a possible find. And then these two here, uh, let's see. So this one here, gonna be a little bit of a wood grain on there as you see. It's a pretty cool looking wood grain one. It's a 1980D. I like these. I don't usually keep them if they're this light. It's a little bit tougher to see when you bring it back, but usually if you can pull it back a couple of foot and see the, the strands are going across there, I'll hold on to it. But not this one. It's just a nice little fine. Pull it off the side, but I'm gonna poke this one up under the scope. See if we, see if I remember, it was actually yesterday whenever I pulled this one. But let's see what we got. Some D, we trust. I wonder if this one is actually the, oh no, I know what this one is. So 1967, this one's actually gonna be some of the uh, die clash that's going on back here. You see the clashing going in between the pillars here? So a nice little clash there on that side. You come down here, it's a little bit of clashing on the bottom here below the uh, Lincoln Memorial. Just a little bit going on in this side. You can see the back side here, some on this right pillar. And a little bit right there. Usually if you got a really good die clash, you'll see what's actually a little bit of clashing right here. But you'll see heavier where <clears throat> heavier marks right here are coming on top side of the Lincoln Memorial or the front side of uh, Lincoln's coat's at. But yeah, usually that's his neckline area. It comes around to his head down here. And then it goes around to the back of his neck and the, his other side of the jacket here. So a little bit of clashing going on there. But yeah, that's not much, not much of a find. It's kind of crazy. Like I said, this is a $50 bag. So I'm crossing fingers the last quarter or last bit of these, we get to get something out of it. Okay, well, we are done with that bag. That bag is actually $50 in pennies. And as you see, we didn't get a whole lot of the, that big bag. Thought it was going to be a lot more, which is fine. I have been skunked in, on boxes before. So that would be two boxes of pennies, basically, to make up your 50 bucks. Now, we do have some 1982 small date Denver's right here. We're gonna put up on a scale here in a second. I'm gonna show you that. Just show you what we've got so far. We got a couple of Canadian cents there. We got that Balboa also. Come over here to the 2009s. Now this is the 2009 Ds and then 2009 Philadelphia's here. So the one I'm basically big time looking for is gonna be that uh, 2009 with Lincoln sitting on the log here. You definitely wanna check if it's a Philadelphia, not a Denver, but you definitely wanna check between Pointy finger and the thumb there that's left on the book, right right there in between the pointy finger and the thumb. So nice little variety there. I think I pulled a really beautiful one probably about eight months ago out of a box, but that's at the house. Nice to send it off to get it. Great, that's pretty cool. So uh, move on up here actually, which is funny. 
we did find one wheat scent, and that's what it looks like. A 1953D wheat scent. So we do have a wheat scent on the board. That's always a fine. Definitely going to take this one to the house. Made of all copper. Throw that in a jug as well. So then I've got some things stacked off this side. where We already looked at the 1980D and that 1967. Now the 1995, I just pulled it out because it was a little wire, wiry looking. Like it was super skinny the way everything was. Like that 5, the trailings of the 5 was pretty small. Come on up here to like the R. It's like just wiry or super skinny. The T there. It looks like it's got something going on with it possibly. Probably some machine doubling. Same thing with the D. It's like it's notched right here on the bottom of the D. Same thing inside the E. So a little wiry on some of the letters there. Nothing on Liberty though. Has eh, probably the I on there. Just a little skinny, super skinny actually compared to the 1995s I pulled out of the bag. And then now I'm going to show you something since we didn't have very many finds. Let's go ahead and go through, give you guys some information. So you want to look for your 1982 small dates. Now the small date, as you see on the two there, it's got a nice little curve in the belly of the two. Now the 1982 large date, see the curve in the belly right here, the two. Now the 1982 large date, the two is going to be straight line. It won't have the little belly in the middle of the two right there. It's just gonna be basically from here straight down to the corner. And you will be uh, quite a bit bigger, you'll be able to see it. But 1982, that's gonna be the best way to identify these. Now also, these also have, if you can find them in a 3.1 grams for a 1982 small date, Denver. So you wanna put them on the scale and check. Majority of them are gonna be 2.5 and 2.6. So that's gonna be a 2.5. 2.5, 2.5, same thing, 2.5. So basically, what, like I said, the normal ones are going to be 2.5, 2.6. The ones you want to find are going to be 3.1 grams. So make sure you have yourself a little scale, a little pocket scale, something smaller, whichever. And make sure you're checking that because if you find one that's 3.1 grams, it's worth a lot of money. Definitely want to get it taken, slabbed, or checked out by a professional. And uh, and see what the market is, see what you want to do with it. But definitely want to check for those. Now this right here also, now I've got a few more coins set up. This is going to be a 1992 Denver, a 1999 Philadelphia, and a 1988. So 1988 here, you can have a doubled ear on this one. You can have a, a doubled ear on 1984. You can have a doubled ear on the uh, uh, 1997. So you want to make sure you're checking all of these. If you have a scope, if possible, you know, you can go to Walmart. Actually, you can go online on Walmart and get a scope, a four inch digital scope for 30 bucks. Or you can go to Amazon and find a bunch of scopes there. You can have scopes that you can hook into your computer and broadcast a bigger screen for you, or if you're okay with a smaller screen, do it, because it's well worth it. But the doubled ear, this is a normal ear. Now your doubled ear is basically see where the notching is on this indentation here. You might have another ear that comes out and it adds it to the earlobe. It's gonna be right here on the bottom of the earlobe. So it's gonna be either a nice little V point that's on there for your doubled ear on the 1988. Your 1997 is going to have to where it starts doubling probably about midways of the ear and it will literally be gapped off of the earlobe and turns back in. Now I've got a video on the 1997 doubled ear that I found a couple of months ago. I probably need to fish that out and see which one it is, but um, hopefully here in the next few days I can actually come up with you guys a nice informational video. Uh, I've got quite a few folks actually emailing me about what to look for, especially when they're new to the hobby. Um, especially uh, what, where they want to go and get the coins. You know, if they want to look through circulated or uncirculated, you want to look through it all. You want to look through everything on there. So it's it, it's all worth money, but a lot of folks are like, well, is it worth your time to come in to do this? It's a hobby. So, I mean, if it's, if it's worth your time, I mean, I'm doing sports cards also too. So it's just for me to do something as a hobby, collect it all together. But definitely you want to make sure you check all your 84s, 88s, and 97 for the double deer. This 1999, you're going to be looking for, so a 98 
99 and 2000 Philadelphia. See, it doesn't have a mint mark on the bottom of the, there, the 1999. You want to make sure you look for 1998, 1999, and 2000. And you want to flip it over to the reverse and check your AM. See how these are basically touching? You're going to want to have a gap in between your A and the M there. It's going to have, it's going to probably be about as wide as gap as it is between the E and the S. It's going to be minute. You'll be able to see it without a scope too. So that's what makes this an easy coin to check for, especially for variety. So you want to, like say, 98, 99, and 2000. Make sure you have that wide AM in there. So then, set this one. This is a 92D. So a 92D or the 92 Philadelphia, you wanna also flip over to the reverse. Same thing on the A and M there. I'm gonna come up here to America. That's the type, that's the gap you need to have a wide AM for, all right? So actually what you're looking for on the 92, you wanna have a close AM. Basically what I just showed you on the 99 there that had the A and M were touching, your 92s need to have it touching. Your 97 or 98, 99, and 2000 need to have this gap right here to be considered a wide AM variety. And as always, you want to make sure the coins are in best shape as possible too. If you want to submit off for grading, this one right here will easily be an MS state. And you know, if you had something on it and if it was in this condition, it would probably be worth grading. Um, but yeah, just wanted to give you guys a heads up on a few things. Um, like I say, it was a nice hunt. I've never had a bag actually to hunt through. So that was kind of fun. Uh, actually, the roommate here got it from the bank because I had been so busy at work. I haven't had time to get back to a bank to get in and do something. But anyhow, I hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure if you have a question, I do put my email in the description of the video here. So check out the description. Uh, send me an email, pop a comment in here, and I get back with you guys if y'all need help. Uh, looking at what websites to go to, what kind of coins you want to start off with, whatever you need, just let me know. Like I said, post a comment in there. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button for me, guys, and y'all have a fantastic day.